Uh, welcome to the Equal Opportunities Committee, the 10th meeting of 2015. Can you set any electronic devices to flight mode or off, please? I'd like to start with introductions. We are supported at the table by clerking and research staff, official reporters and broadcasting services, and around the room by the security office. My name is Margaret McCulloch, and I'm the committee's convener. And members will now introduce themselves in turn, starting here on my right. Uh, Sandra White, MSP Deputy Convener. Matt, John Finney, MSP Highlands and Islands. Annabel Goldie, MSP West of Scotland. Good morning, Krishna, the MSP for North East of Scotland. Morning, I'm Jane Baxter, MSP for Mid Scotland and Fife. And John Mason, MSP for Glasgow Shettleston. Thank you. The first agenda item today is a decision on taking business in private. You're asked to agree consideration of the work programme at item five in private. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item two is to hear evidence from the Minister for Local Government and Community Empowerment on an affirmative instrument, namely the Equality Act 2010, Specific Duties, Scotland, Amendment Regulations 2015. This instrument is laid under the affirmative procedure, which means the Parliament must approve it before the provisions may come into force. Following this evidence taken, the committee will be invited to consider a motion to approve the instrument under Agenda Item 3. I welcome the Minister and his accompanying official, and can I invite the Minister to make any opening remarks? Thank you, Convener, and can I say it's wonderful to be back, however briefly. Um, pleased to be here today in consideration of the draft Equality Act 2010 Specific Duties Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015. The draft regulations propose to make routine amendments to the Equality Act 2010 Specific Duties Scotland Regulations 2012 in consequence of the establishment of some new public bodies and office holders in Scotland. This follows the order which the committee already approved on 5th of February, which added to the list of bodies subject to the public sector equality duty in the Equality Act 2010. All of those additional bodies are now listed in the schedule to our draft amendment regulations. And if approved, the draft amendment regulations will ensure that recently established bodies and office holders will become subject to the 2012 regulations, our Scottish specific equality duties. These include Historic Environment Scotland, our Health and Social Care Integration Joint Boards, Regional Boards for Colleges, Children's Hearing Scotland, Revenue Scotland and Foods Standard Scotland. The committee will be familiar with the Equality Act, which introduced the public sector equality duty, requiring listed public authorities to have due regard when exercising their functions to the need to eliminate discrimination, advance equality of opportunity and foster good relations between people who share a protected characteristic and those who do not. The purpose of the Scottish specific duties is to help those authorities listed in the 2012 regulations to improve performance of the general equality duty. The regulations came into, forth, uh, into force on 27 May 2012, so they are still relatively new. These set a robust and proportionate supporting framework for the duty in the Equality Act based on data collection and evaluation, transparency and accountability. And in this way, they help public authorities to perform the PSED better. The framework requires listed public authorities to report on mainstreaming the equality duty, publish equality outcomes and report progress, undertake equality impact assessment of new policies and practices, gather and use employee information on equality and diversity, publish their gender pay gap and a statement on equal pay and occupational segregation if they have over 150 employees, and consider award criteria and conditions in relation to public procurement. Uh, I should add these go quite some way beyond the comparable duties in England. Uh, listing, uh, listed public authorities were first required to publish equality outcomes, mainstreaming reports and employee information by April 2013, with progress reports due by 30th of April 2015. Statements containing equal pay and occupational segregation were required at the same time, with new statements to be published every fourth year. The draft amendment regulations propose that the new authorities are subject to the same reporting requirements and intervals as the 2012 regulations. Initial reporting deadlines are proposed for April 2016 for all the new authorities except Historic Environment Scotland 
who we propose should report one year later by April 2017, with intervals continuing uh, as normal thereafter. Historic Environment Scotland will replace the Royal Commission on the Ancient and Historical Monuments of Scotland, better known as RCAMS, a public body established by Royal Warrant, and Historic Scotland, an executive agency within the Scottish Government. Historic Environment Scotland has the general function of investigating, caring for, and promoting Scotland's historic environment. The new organisation, I should add, is already subject to the public sector equality duty and is currently operating in transitional mode with the two existing bodies prior to taking on sole responsibility from 1st of October 2015. Historic Environment Scotland will be ready to report on the Scottish-specific equality duties within two years. The draft regulations would change relevant references to ensure that the 2012 regulations continue to apply to publicly funded colleges and universities as well. Finally, I'd like to assure the convener that we have consulted with the Equality and Human Rights Commission in keeping with our statutory requirements and the Commission is content with our proposed consequential arrangements. And I hope that the Committee will recommend that the draft regulations be approved. Thank you, Minister. Because this is a straightforward instrument, I don't think the members have any questions. I'm proved wrong on that. John Mason. Thank you, Convener. Yes, well, I, I think I said I might not have, but I've just thought of one. Uh, and uh, seeing the Ministers here, we might as well ask them a few questions. Um, I mean, I suppose I'm just slightly disappointed that this is not a little bit more of an automatic process, and I suspect that's not within your control or anybody else's control, because, I mean, clearly the principle would be that we want all colleges and universities to be under the Equality Act, and yet we're having to actually do something to bring the regional bodies, and I suppose I'm a wee bit more concerned, because the University of the Highlands and Islands, I think, has been going for some time, and the fact that it's only coming in now a... You know, I, ho I hope nothing has happened that, that, that shouldn't, shouldn't have happened. But, uh, and the same, I suppose, with the Historic Environment Scotland. If the two bodies that were previously subject to the Equality Act and we're now bringing them together and we have to kind of do something, it just seems a kind of cumbersome process. But I, I don't know if the Minister could comment on that. Well, any process by which additional duties are placed on a public body is obviously going to invite a, a wish for a fair level of parliamentary scrutiny. This is something that has been considered in the past, and it's very rare, I have to say, to come in front of a committee and for a committee member to say that the government should subject themselves to less parliamentary scrutiny when they want to amend legislation. But uh, I will take that and, and, and consider. But I think an affirmative uh, procedure in order to bring some quite onerous duties onto additional uh, on, onto new public bodies seems to me to be a proportionate way of, of doing it, and certainly it's something that we've taken opinion on in the past. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Sandra White would like to ask a question next now, please. Uh, thank you very much and good morning, uh, Minister. Uh, can I just say I do welcome, you know, the definitive instrument and obviously the, the new bodies being put forward uh, in this particular way. I think any form of tightening up in the Quality Act is most welcome. And as you mentioned yourself, it's actually even more powers than we have in other uh, parliamentary uh, buildings as such. The one uh, I specifically wanted to raise, as you mentioned, the Regional Board for colleges and obviously the regional board for Glasgow colleges is one which I'm particularly interested in and uh, the quality duties about eliminating discrimination. I wonder if the minister could perhaps clarify for me uh, the gather evidence. We know that four people have resigned from that body, also the chair as well, and uh, there, there is um, some unrest in regard to, you know, allegations of harassment. I wonder if you can give me some clarification into the fact that if this does go further, will this go before the ministers in the Scottish Government and in, in, in your particular portfolio, if there's evidence of harassment in that respect? Obviously, I don't want to comment on any ongoing legal or disciplinary or other uh, disputes. Certainly, the education side of the government has uh, powers and ultimate um, well, has certain powers with regard to good governance within colleges in, in Scotland and certainly has the, the portfolio responsibility for this. It is an area where I'm aware uh, that I'm aware education colleagues are monitoring in, in terms of specific uh, issues with regard to internal, um, internal disputes within any organisation. That isn't something that would 
uh, normally come to us, but I would advise anybody in any organisation facing that kind of behaviour to use the, or, or that, that kind of, uh, or, or making those kinds of allegations to, to make the reporting under the, the methods that are available through the, the helpline. Thank, thank, thank you, Minister. Thank you. John Finney. Minister, this, this is a, a bit lateral, but um, a number of my constituents would be um, surprised if I didn't raise the issue when we we're talking about equalities of the, the food standards. Scotland, in a situation where um, this new body previously, uh, um, the constituent bodies, had their logo and letterheads bilingual, they moved to a situation where it is, uh, Gaelic has dropped from that. Now, if we want to show equal respect for both languages, would you throw your weight behind the reinstatement of bilingual um, letterhead and deed logo for that organisation, please? Well, there are certainly uh, strong reasons for every, uh, every organisation in Scotland to consider very carefully the role of Gaelic and indeed legal burdens under that now as well. I will undertake to go away and investigate the matter further and to report back to the member. Many thanks. Okay. More in time. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions you would like to ask the Minister? No? Okay. Um, moving on now to agenda item three. Calls for the committee to formally consider and recommend approval of the motion, namely S4M 13207, that the Equal Opportunities Committee recommends that the Equality Act 2010, Specific Duties Scotland, Amended Regulations 2015 be approved. I would like to invite the Minister to speak to and move motion S4M13207. In light of having already spoken, formally moved. Thank you. The question is that motion S4M13207, in the name of Marco Biaggi, be approved. Are we all agreed? Yes. We all agreed. That concludes consideration of the affirmative instrument and we will report the outcome of our consideration to the Parliament. And I'd like to thank the Minister for his participation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item four is a consideration of a draft annual report for the parliamentary year from May 11, 2014 to May 10, 2015. Does anyone have any comments they'd like to make about the draft report? Is everyone happy? John Finney. Um, thank you, Kevin. I think it's a very good report. I, I did mention to the clerk before um, whether we should mention that, particularly in relation to I, uh, paragraphs uh, 15 and 16, that a debate was held in that, albeit that it was a, a Scottish Government debate, I think, to, uh, perhaps with a link in the report to, to the debate. Okay. Yeah. Are you happy with that? The links on the, on, the, on the back. Is that what we do usually? You know, all the links on the back page. The reference. It's, yeah. Is that a bit cumbersome? Mm -hmm. It's a new change in, in formatting of reports mm. that's been taken forward on a new template. Mm. Okay. I, I like links on the bottom of the page, but <laughs> if it's a new template, it's a so new you're template. happy with it to leave it as I, is. If I'm told it's a new that's template, and we need to add it too. We need to add it. Tough. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Can I just make a comment in um, item four? where it says we agreed to meet in Easter House. Can you add in, in Glasgow? Because on one of the other pages, you've got Easter House in Glasgow as well. And we're assuming that people know where Easter House is. Yeah. OK. Um, are we then agreed, and as if all the members content with the report? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, John. Yep. Yep. OK. So... It's not substantive. Because I've been sort of in and out the committee, and when I was looking at the report, I wondered if anyone looking at the report is interested in committee membership and changes. Or maybe there is a template for all Parliament committee reports that this is how it is. I think it's, it's a template, but I would imagine the overarching annual report will show the membership. I'll find out. I'll, Fair I'll enough. Some clarification it's just an observation. That. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Clarify that and bring it back yeah. to the next meeting, OK? Mm -hmm. It's not... It is convenient. Sure. Yes, I was just interested. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? No? So we were happy with the report overall and the amendments that's been made. Okay. So that actually concludes the public part of today's meeting. Our next meeting will take place on Thursday, the 4th of June. And I will now suspend the meeting for the committee to move into private session. <laughs>